Hey, welcome everyone to episode 61 of Today in the Scene. I'm Joe with Indie Arcade Wave, and I just want to say thanks for checking us out. If you like what we're doing here, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'm going to do something that has been highly requested by a lot of our viewers, and that is cover X Arcadia. I don't know a ton about X Arcadia. I've looked into it, and I think it's a super cool platform. Um, it's got some really good games, some kind of variations of different games that were already out by indie developers. And I think it's a really good platform for smaller developers to get into a big space in the arcade without building their own dedicated cabinets. And out of everybody in my network, I thought Adam Pratt from Arcade Heroes was the best person to reach out to on this for sure, because he's been covering it for a long time. He's been to multiple conventions. He knows people within the organization, and he actually owns one himself and has bought alternate games for it to expand on it. So I guess we'll uh, we'll say hi to Adam. How are you doing today? Good. How are you doing, Joe? I'm doing great, and I'm really excited to talk about this because, I've, like I said, I've had a bunch of people reaching out to me on Discord to talk about X Arcadia, and I haven't really dove into it too much with you. I know we touched mm -hmm. on it a little bit the first episode we were talking about it, yeah. um, but I guess just reintroduce yourself so anybody that hasn't seen you on the show knows who you are, what you do, um, and then we'll just jump into kind of what X Arcadia is and why you got interested in it. Okay, sure. So, yeah, I'm uh, Adam with ArcadeHeroes.com, uh, just that website, and it's a website that's been around since 2006, and it covers news from the arcade world, and in about, in 2008, I started up my own arcade called the Game Grid Arcade at the time. Um, at the beginning of 2020, I had to change the name and pick Arcade Galactic. Uh, but uh, it's what I do for a living, and I've worked in various as or aspects of the arcade industry over the years, and um, been very fortunate to know a lot of people that develop the games and things of that nature. And so, as a part of our operating this arcade and finding out about the X Arcadia, I was among the first people in the US to grab one of the kits and I, I got a cabinet for it, but uh, I'm sure we can talk more about that later, but uh, that's kind of a summary of who I am and what I have to do with our kids. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't even know that you were one of, I mean, the first to really get a kit here in the US. I think that's awesome and that just makes me happier that you're the one I chose to talk about the X Arcadia <laughs> with. Um, I guess let's just go all the way back to the beginning. When did you first find the XDR Arcadia? What drew you to it? And how did you get that kit? So um, one of the fortunes of doing something like Arcade Heroes, one of the things that I feel very grateful for is that uh, a lot of the time people reach out to me with news. And that's exactly what happened in about December of 2017, where Eric Chung, the CEO of X Arcadia reached out to me and gave me kind of a summary of what it was that he was doing and, and planning on doing and had been developing, I think, for about a year prior to that. And what that was, was a, a kit, a new kit for conversion kit for arcades, but also something that was a lot like the old Neo Geo MBS where it would have cartridges and you could swap those out easily at any time and it would handle up to four at one time. And of course you could have less than that, just not more. And that was going to allow a lot of, a lot more content to reach the arcade. Because if you're not really familiar with the arcade industry, uh, the main problem that people like myself have with this is that brand new games can cost, well, they do cost thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars. And so to get a brand new game in your arcade, there's some operators who just don't even bother. They just rely on older equipment that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years old to put into their arcades because that is a lot more affordable. The problem, of course, is that uh, things tend to break down and they're a little bit more maintenance heavy when they're older and with certain ones, uh, finding parts for them becomes a task, especially when it comes to the old CRT monitors, the old tube monitors. And, and of course, those just, those aren't new. And the thing that I've discovered running an arcade for the past 13 years is that you need new content to pay the bills. Now, of course, most arcades out there, they'll rely on things like ticket redemption 
and I just I've never liked Ticket Redemption. I understand why it's big because it does make money, and that's why most arcades have it because that's what pays the bills. But I just wanted to create an arcade that was purely focused on entertainment games, video games, pinball, things like that, old ones, new ones. But in the course of operating the arcade, what I found, as I mentioned, is that it's the new games that pay my bills. And unfortunately, a lot of the old stuff, it's, it's kind of filler. <laughs> and I hate to say that, it's just, but from a business perspective, it really is. It's just kind of taking up space. And you know, somebody will find something that they like to play every once in a while. But there are some games that I have which only make a buck or two a week. You know, maybe it, I don't even know if that's enough to cover how much energy they use during the week. And so um, you need new content. But as I mentioned, the problem is, is that new content is generally very, very expensive, almost cost prohibitive, to the point where if an arcade, if you want to keep it up to date, if they want to do that, you have to maybe spend buy one or two new games a year at most sometimes there are kids that maybe won't invest in new stuff for a few years just buy one piece and that's it for a while and again rely more on used stuff and so the x arcadia what it was promising to do was to bring those costs down and increase the amount of content that we can get now another problem of course with the arcade industry is that for the most part there's only a few genres that the big guys focus on. Racing games, light gun games, maybe something unique here and there once in a while, or a lot of them are focused on what I call redemption or video redemption games, which are just glorified redemption game, ticket redemption games, a little better than what they, uh, the, the mechanical stuff might have used to have been, but still just very shallow games like that. And so things like fighting games, beat em up games, stuff like that, you just didn't have that anymore as far as new went. You might in Japan, but even then it's rare. So, so yeah, that's how I, that's a long-winded way of saying how I discovered X Arcadia is they reached out to me and uh, telling me about their plans as to what they were going to do. And unfortunately it did take a little bit longer to reach fruition as they had hoped to launch in 2018 but various factors kept them from doing that I'm not sure what those were exactly and so the platform it was about 2019 the very very end of 2019 november 2019 is when it launched in japan and then in uh, january 2020 is when it launched here in the states and to the question of you know, what interested me in that um, it, it's back at what I was talking about earlier. I liked putting newer games in my arcade. And again, because that helps pay the bills, but I also just like supporting things that are new and supporting those developments that are out there. I've supported indies as well as more major arms of arcade development. And the EXA just seemed like a natural way to do that. Of course, I also had a Neo Geo MBS, and that was always a, a solid one, even though it was an older one. It was one that would still bring people in, uh, particularly King of Fight, the King of Fighters, and Metal Slug, and, and uh, some recognizable names like that. But I, I saw the potential there for content, a uh, lot more affordable, and just being able to bring some dead genres back to the arcade because that's what they were promising they were talking about brand new fight one-on-one -on -one fighting games and uh, action platformer games and adventure games and, and all these sorts of things that just very rarely have you seen the likes of Roth Thrills or Sega touch these genres again and so they've been effectively dead in the arcade scene for you know, 20 years or more but X Arcadia was promising to bring those back. Yeah, I mean, I think that the X Arcadia as a platform is just, it's perfect. It, like you said, it has so many different genres. You can kind of mix and match what you need for your individual location. Um, when you got this kit, I know, is, is what you have right now in your arcade the same thing as the kit that you got originally? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So um, 
yeah, the, the kits, I, well, what happened was, is I was, since I was intent on getting this and I, I knew when it was going to be coming out and made available, I contacted a company called Fun Company. They're out of Wisconsin. They've done a lot of cabinet work for the big guys, Rothrills, Sega, Incredible Technologies, and Bandai Namco, pretty much everybody that makes arcade games has probably made something through Fun Company at one point. And they have a cabinet design called the Fun Glow, which was designed with the JAMA harness, a way to connect uh, older arcade PCBs to it. And the EXA, it's JAMA compatible. It uses a different wiring standard called JBS, but all you need is an I.O. board to convert that. So like Sega Naomi cabinets use JBS and a few other uh, systems from the early 2000s use that as well and so i ordered one of those cabinets which was very affordable and i, I know some people complain that i didn't get something like a bulix cabinet or, or something like that and i would like to uh, at some point but those sometimes importing are it's a little bit of a trick and a little bit of an expense and there's a lot of variations of ulix cabinets so you have to get the right kind if you want the games to look the best on there but the nice thing about the Fungalo cabinet is it allows me to add my own TV. And so what I did was I found the best 4K gaming TV that uh, was being offered on the market or one of the best, not, not, not a top of the line. I didn't buy like a $2,000 TV, <laughs> but uh, it was around Black Friday and I, I think I got something for like six, $700. But it, it was highly rated because it has what's known as low input lag, which is something that you want with fast action fighting games shoot 'em ups which is also there's a lot of shoot 'em ups on the exit platform that were being shown off so uh, that would mean you wouldn't have lag between the time you push something on the controls and when something would happen on the screen and so uh, that's something that x has been very focused on is having some of the lowest input lag in the industry as uh, they have quicker response times than what you would find on your game consoles but anyways i i got that cabinet first and took some time for the kit itself to ship but once it did i installed it i actually have an unboxing video of that installation process of when i put it in and i got it with two games aka to blue type r and the kung fu versus karate champ so i had a scrolling shoot 'em up and a new one-on-one -on -one fighting game and I just went from there. Yeah, I mean, that sounds like you got a good selection right off the bat and you you knew what you were looking for. And Don over at Funko is awesome. I've been talking to him a lot lately yeah. about getting cabinets built. Um, so yeah, if anybody needs that, that's the place to go for sure for a cabinet build. Mm -hmm. um, I guess, what was uh, some of your experiences with uh, XR Arcadia at conventions. I know you just recently posted some videos from a couple months ago where mm -hmm. you were playing some of the new games that they had that hadn't even been released yet. So you got kind of a, a sneak yeah. peek there. Um, what were some of the things that you saw at these conventions and um, what really stood out to you about the system itself? Sure. Uh, so I really kicked myself from that convention because I grabbed the wrong component to hold my camera to the tripod. And so I, I had to hand hold it a lot. And that makes it difficult when you're at trade shows, especially if you're playing something. As normally, what I like to do is just set the camera to the side and hit record, and then I play. Um, or I'm filming somebody else playing something, uh, which is what happens a lot of the time. But uh, having to handhold it and play at the same time just wasn't working out. And then also, I was having battery problems, and I was trying to find a replacement battery for the camera, and I just could not find one locally. And so, um, so there were some issues there, but um, so that was actually the second time that I had come across X Arcadia. Uh, the first time was at California Extreme 2018, where they had, uh, I guess they don't really have booths there, but they had a space where they had several Vulix cabinets and they had the system uh, being available to play with several games on there. Kung Fu versus Karate Champ, uh, Strania EX, which is a shoot 'em up. Uh, they had. Super Hydora AC, which I actually don't think was released ultimately. Uh, Infinos Exa, another shoot 'em up. 
and uh, Cosmic Digger 3671, which is an odd remake of a 1980 Japanese arcade game that's extremely obscure, um, but a four-player la- uh, maze game that's kind of like Dig Dug, too. But um, So that was the first time I got to meet with the guys behind the scenes at EXA, and uh, I did an interview with Eric Chung at the time where we discussed a lot of what their plans and hopes were uh, for what they were doing. And he also held some, um, uh, he, he did a couple of, I know they're not called lectures, but um, a couple of talks where he also talked about the X-Arcadia system. Uh, he sat down with the owner of Mikado Arcade, which is a popular arcade in Tokyo that uh, was also excited about the system and explained a lot of the reasoning behind why the system was needed. Because here in the States, we have a different, well, I mean, apart from the cultural differences, uh, there's differences in how the arcade industry functions. And one thing that I learned through Eric is that a lot of these Japanese arcades have had an even worse time when it comes to dealing with new equipment. And the, the problem has been ever since about Virtua Fighter V that Sega released, I think in 2005, 2006, that's when they started doing what's called revenue sharing. And that's where the developer takes a cut of the revenue from the arcade operator. And that can be used or is often used to help maintain the game and do more content updates and things like that. But it becomes detrimental to arcades themselves because, for one, you cannot run these games without having this online, always online connection. And that also eats into the profits. And uh, I don't know of many people that get rich off of this business. And in Japan, um, yeah, there are some big chains, but there's a lot of independent operators, just small time operators. And it's really difficult when the revenue shares start getting into 40, 50 percent and taking a cut of every single play. And that also means you just can't go and buy a game and run it. You have to always connect it to the Internet and and you have to buy the equipment, too. So that's kind of an absurd thing where you have to pay thousands of dollars to get a brand new game. And then you still have to spend all this money on sending it back to the developer. And so that's great for the developers, but it's not great for the operators. And that's where before the pandemic, there was all this talk of uh, Japanese arcades are dying. And it was mainly due to this kind of issue that was eating into their ability to pay their bills. And so what X Arcadia was promising, particularly for that market, was to bring the offer a distribution system for content content as there is a, there are a couple of those in japan that are digital distribution they're almost like steam for arcades uh, one's called nesica cross live by taito there's uh, all.net cross multi by sega um, but these also it's all revenue share you don't own the games you don't have the pcbs that you could resell later on and so it just it put a lot of pressure on japanese arcades some of which just weren't able to survive having all these other pressures. And of course, there are other factors, taxes. And um, at the beginning of 2020 or 2021, there's an indoor smoking ban, which has also affected them. Um, so you have just all these problems. And so EXA is saying, look, we've got something here that it's old school in its business model, but it's brand new uh, as far as its power goes, as far as the content goes. And so that was that was one of those things that I learned from the first time I saw them. But the second time, the more recent one, that was Amusement Expo 2021 in Las Vegas, held at the very last day of June. And that was their first official U.S. appearance. And that's where they had have been working with Fung Company, the aforementioned Fung Company, to design their own kind of dedicated cabinet. And... So that's what I was able to film there. And then I was very fortunate to be able to play a lot of games that I'd only read about. As I mean, I have since since I purchased the system, I have bought a total of seven games. I currently have six cartridges. But uh, you know, there's, I think as of right now, there's 18 games available for the system. And so that gave me the opportunity to experience a lot of those. 
as well as get the opportunity to try out some brand new games. And um, I mentioned at the beginning, I was kicking myself for my camera problems. I'm usually quite prepared when it comes to that, but uh, this time I wasn't. And so I, I, like I said, I really kicked myself because I had a chance to play some games and I wasn't able to film them because uh, we were just kind of going through different games and I was thinking, oh, I'll get a chance to come back to these later. And I didn't because I just got so busy wrapped up in filming other sh stuff at the show and I wasn't able to stick around for day two of the show to be able to get that. But uh, fortunately, I did grab this uh, 2021 product catalog and a lot of the stuff uh, like it is tells you what the kit is, um, but it also mentions a bunch of the games that are available. This is one of the games that I was able to play that hasn't been released yet. It's not on their website. It's called Shadow Gangs X, and I believe it's just called Shadow Games. It is on Steam. Uh, I guess backtracking really quick. Sorry, I keep doing that. But uh, yes, a lot of these games do exist on Steam. But one thing that really drew my attention to the X Arcadia is how they require their developers to add exclusive content that's only found on these versions. And sometimes their EXA is the one funding this new content. And so it becomes kind of like the situation with Nintendo and Platinum Games with like Bayonetta 2, where there's a lot of people upset that Bayonetta 2 was a uh, Switch exclusive or Wii U exclusive, I can't remember now. But, um, you know, Nintendo funded that for the express purpose of having something exclusive on their platform. And with EXA, uh, there, there are some collectors out there that really hate this, but for arcade operators, which is what this platform is made for, this is essential for us because when, it, especially when it comes to something like a joystick style game, in my personal experience, I have found, and, and others that I know in this business, Whenever there is a console port, especially of a popular game that comes out that's been in arcades, then the arcade sales just die. Now, that, there seems to be exceptions to that, like with racing games um, and, and whatnot, but even then there tends to be some differences there so that the arcade has something exclusive. But when you have a joystick game, you don't have that whole cabinet experience, uh, you know, kind of like with... Uh, like these right here. Like if The Walking Dead came out on consoles, you wouldn't have that cabinet anymore and those unique controllers and all of that. So you'd be losing something. But um, when it comes to a joystick game, you just don't have a lot of that there. And so people just are like, oh, if I can play it at home on my Xbox or my PS5 or whatever, then there's no reason for me to go to the arcade. And so with Exa they do fund and require some changes to the games, uh, new content, new music, new levels, new power-ups, what have you. And to me, that makes it so that it's more appealing for the arcade operator business. Sorry, uh, just, I guess my camera's kind of going out of focus there. But uh, anyways, so while these games will have console equivalents, they often are very different on the X Arcadia. And so one of those examples is like Super Pr Battle Princess Madeline, which is just Battle Princess Madeline on Steam. Um, the arcade version has been completely reworked and it plays a lot more like the arcade version of Ghouls and Ghosts compared to the console version where it's a little bit more Metroidvania, I believe. And, but this one, it's, designed for the needs of the arcade. And that's another essential thing too, especially if there's any indie developers out there where you're designing something for arcade and console. Oftentimes the needs of the arcade are very different from what consoles need. And so you'd need to have a different game design and then it'll be more successful in arcade compared to what might be presented in console. Um, but sorry for all the tangents here. But um, Shadow Gangs X, so that one's uh, coming soon. And that one plays a lot like, um, kind of like the original Shinobi, uh, kind of like Bad Dudes versus Dragon Ninja. And so they were going to add two player simultaneous play to it, making it a little bit more like Bad Dudes uh, for, or, oh, I'm sorry, it's alternate play. And so it is only for one player at a time, but, uh, but alternate play. 
And so that, that was still in its early stages. Um, Infinos X and Gimmick are both games that are available, um, but this is a shoot 'em up. This is a platformer based on an NES game, and I have footage of that one. And I actually have the cartridge right here, so it's not currently installed in my Exus system. But uh, very cute, but very, very tough game. Um, and that's what just one of those genres, or all of these are just genres that you just don't get from the major companies anymore. Um, Aka the Blue Type R, which I mentioned that I have. Uh, Noise Arcuda, which is a very interesting shoot 'em up meets rhythm game. Uh, Acrios Exa, just a shoot 'em up. Uh, this one shows the four player dedicated cabinet for a variety of four player games. Uh, they don't have too many on the market right now, I think just two or three. Um, but it'll still work with two player games. Uh, just, I think it assigns it to the. Uh, the start button that you push but this was also the first this trade show was the first chance that i had to see these cabinets in person they look very sleek in a way i kind of regret jumping the gun and getting the uh exa uh the way that i did beforehand just because these ones do look sleeker sharper uh they also have the nice marquee up top i've had to create my own marquee uh, to handle that and over here is just the two-player 4k cabinet um, but as far as I am aware, I'm the first person that had 4K for the XR Arcadia as well. And so some of the little problems that I ran into, I passed it along to them and they were able to help me solve those. But that also helped them as far as uh, getting these ready for prime time. Um, so yeah, so the four player games, uh, Nippon Marathon Turbo, which is a very fun game and the arcade version has some extra characters and a lot of changes to how the game plays. Uh, Lightning Knights also plays a bit differently. It's kind of like Smash TV meets Gauntlet but without the dual sticks and uh, so this is one that I did have but it's the one that I sold to another operator who picked up a kit recently. Uh, these two games uh, are not available yet. Um, I was able to play P47 Aces Mark II so four-player shoot 'em up game uh, based on a shoot 'em up arcade game from 1996. A lot of fun. Uh, Jitsu Squad is an upcoming beat 'em up, and so that will be released to consoles and PC. But uh, I spoke with the developers of this one, and uh, they're they're very excited to be working with Exa and bringing a, a four-player beat 'em up back to arcades. So that one's going to be pretty cool. Uh, Kung Fu versus Karate Champ. This one has done really well. This is been, this was their first fighting game, and what's great about it is uh, you get to play as Kung Fu movie stars uh, from the past, and uh, so you get to play as the likeness of Chuck Norris or Bruce Lee or Jackie Chan and others, and uh, just play in those fantasy battles. And so uh, this is known as Shaolin versus Wu Tang on, on consoles, but they've rebalanced it a lot for the arcade. Um, improve the graphics, uh, improve the response time, added uh, Daniel from the Karate Kid into it as a selectable character. Uh, Fight of Gods Arcade Edition was one that I got to play at the trade show and you get to play as different uh, gods or um, people from myths that uh, or have been worshipped as gods and, uh, and also play in fantasy battles. Axel City 2 is a, a sequel to an old game that I, I've never played, Axel City, but it feels kind of like either Street Fighter or World Heroes, and so I did get to play that. Um, same with Dynamite Bomb. Uh, this one also maybe a little bit along those lines of a Street Fighter. It's a one-on-one -on -one fighting game, and uh, it was fun. It looked really good. It just I really wish I would have got some footage of that. Um, Rival Megagun XE here. This is one that uh, just got released this past week. And so this is kind of like Twinkle Star Sprites where it's a competitive shoot 'em up And so you're uh, competing to shoot the, the, the different enemies. But if you, uh, as you play, you send enemies over to your opponent. And so it's kind of like a fighting game meets a shoot 'em up But you can also turn into a boss and then fight the other opponents. So that one's a lot of fun. And they completely redesigned the graphics for the arcade version of that. Uh, Chaos Code Exa, it's a fighting game that's kind of sort of like Marvel versus Capcom or maybe Blaze Blue, um, an anime fighter. But uh, been, I just got this one not long ago and people have re really taken to it. They really seem to enjoy that one. So if you're considering the system at all, I definitely would recommend that one. 
Um, this one are all fighters that are coming soon. Uh, you have Arcana Heart, Three Love Max, Six Stars Extend. <laughs> Gotta love these uh, Japanese titles that get uh, really long. Just super, uh, super long names. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you gotta love these uh, super long names, um, but uh, it's always fun. But Arcana Heart, it's an all female anime fighter. And so it's been out there in Japan. And there was Arcana Heart 2 available as a kit through Animero back in 2008, but pretty rare, not, not easy to find. So, uh, that'll make this available and in 4K. Uh, and that's another thing too is all these games are supporting 4k now and so that's uh another thing that often sets them apart from their console versions uh demon bride x again uh, also a, a game that's pretty well known in japan as a fighting game maybe not so much here in the states but i think there's been a pc version uh, but of course this will have uh, you know, more characters and stuff that makes it different bayani which is an up-and-coming uh, 3d fighting game that kind of looks like street fighter 4 uh, from a Filipino developer, and it also uh, involves you, you choose people from Filipino history and you fight as them. And so, uh, of course, they're changed a little bit to be a little bit more super heroic. But um, Vritra Hexa, this is one that I do have. It's kind of like uh, it's a it's a scrolling shooter, scrolling shoot 'em up. Uh, it's kind of like Darius Burst um, meets Dragon Spirit, and it's a lot of fun. It looks beautiful. I love the, the 2D graphics on it, and they recently did an update for this, which added a little bit more content. Uh, Blazing Chrome AC, that's another one that I have, which is a lot like Contra and Metal Slug, a little bit more on the Contra side, um, but depending on the character you pick, the, you can it plays almost like Strider, because uh, there's some characters that only have melee weapons, and so this one's uh, a, a lot of fun there. Sorry, I keep moving this off the camera. And uh, that was by a Brazilian developer, and uh, just some changes. An extra character was added to that uh, for the arcade version. Strania EX, which has uh, Strania was released on the Xbox 360 years ago. Um, that's by G.Rev, and so this is, I guess, the definitive version of that. Um, and same with uh, Dodon Patchy True Death Exa label, and so. Uh, a lot of people know the name Dodon Patchy from Cave, and uh, Cave has also announced Crimson Katana Exa, which is Akai Katana, which was released like two, 2010, I think. And so uh, that'll be available on this soon, but uh, Dodon Patchy is available. And I, as far as I'm aware, that's the best selling Exa game so far, mainly through Japanese customers. And so that's done extremely well over there. Um, so, uh, Savariar Delta AC, I probably butchered that name, so sorry to fans of Savariar or whatever it's called. <laughs> um, but that's a vertical scrolling shoot 'em up, kind of in the vein of things like Aka and Blue, as well as uh, Dodon Patchy. Uh, and same with Shikondo Reg Purgatory. And so both of these are games designed for vertical screens, and so that'll work for any existing candy cab that has a vertical screen, or if you wanted to get the vertical cabinet then it has those sorts of games and then uh other vertical supported games like pretty much all the shoot 'em ups except for reacher hexa and infinos hexa support vertical screen mode and so that's just to highlight that and i think that covers it but um you know since the that particular trade show Actually, at that particular trade show, they wanted to do their really big announcement of a new partner. Uh, in fact, they had a sign printed out for it um, showing SNK and EXA uh, joining forces. Uh, it's just SNK is a big company, and so they just weren't able to get the approval to do that um, at that time. But uh, they still took pictures and, and whatnot. But that, of course, was announced not long ago. And so SNK is bringing content to the platform. Uh, Samurai Showdown 5 Perfect, which was released on the Nintendo Switch as a part of the Samurai Showdown collection and was a very different, um, re I don't know if you call it a remaster, but uh, a rearrangement of, the, um, of Samurai Showdown 5 that hadn't been released as SNK canceled it back in the day and so it was finished up and then released to the to the switch 
but now the arcades will get that as they were originally intended to and uh, it also will have some additional content added to that but also other snk games are going to be coming to the platform and i think that's a very exciting development you know that's a name that everybody knows uh, but it also brings things full circle as far as the comparisons with this and uh, the neo geo mbs and on top of that they have an executive that used to be the president of SNK USA, uh, Paul Jacobs, who was president of that company uh, from 1990 to 1995. So he was in a part of the company and was one of the people who made the Neo Geo MBS a success. And so he's been instrumental in also helping bring SNK to the table to bring that content and the, I, while i can't mention what they are there are some very exciting things coming from snk uh, to the x arcadia and so the samurai showdown 5 perfect is just the beginning to that and i think a lot of people are going to be very excited to um, to see those games and be able to play those games certain games in the arcade again yeah, I mean, you gave us a ton of info there, and it's exactly <laughs> ex ex info exactly <laughs> what I wanted you to do was just <laughs> come on here and let people know what the X Arcadia is all about. And you went through all the games, which is awesome. Um, and I think the story with Paul, I think there's a little more depth you should go into with that one yeah. about um, how you first met him and kind of how they got together, I guess you could say. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Paul Jacobs, he's uh, been in this industry. He's worked for a lot of companies beyond SNK. Um, he's worked for Data East and um, and several other companies. Some that some of the names you wouldn't know. But um, he contacted me kind of out of the blue. Um, I think it was in 2019. Uh, so he'd been reading my website and been reading the coverage that I've been doing about the X Arcadia. Was, um, unfortunately, a lot of sites out there that cover games in general just don't cover arcades, and so they haven't really talked about X Arcadia, but I have. And um, so he was reading that, but he, he called me up, and I had met him once or twice before and at trade shows, but he was like working for a... Um, a uh, air hockey table manufacturer, I think it was. And so we just briefly spoke, but uh, didn't get into too much detail. I didn't know at the time uh, when I met him in person that he had had so much history in the industry and uh, worked for SNK and all that. But uh, yeah, he got a hold of my number from somewhere and uh, gave me a call. And he started asking a lot of questions about EXA and uh, wanted to get my thoughts and feelings on that. And I could tell he had done his research. He, he definitely knew what he was talking about and um, already knew a lot of stuff that I didn't need to answer. But there were certain gaps that he wanted to get some more data on. And then it wasn't long after that that he was announced as being the, um, I think it was executive VP for the United States uh, for XR Acadia. And so he was also at this trade show, Amusement Expo International, and uh, I believe they were they, they took some pictures after the show was over, uh, him um, shaking someone's hand behind the sign. And, you know, again, just showing that full circle that, you know, here's a guy who was instrumental in making the Neo Geo MBS uh, an icon in the industry uh, back in the 1990s. And it still remains today. And so he's one of the people that's behind the X Arcadia, which I think if there's anybody that's hesitant about the platform and whatnot so i can also see that hey this is you know, definitely a serious force to be dealt with and and has a lot of good connections but even though it has these connections with all these big name companies they still want to find a content that is you can say indian nature i mean of course they they will be rigorous in their um in their vetting of it, um, I've been told about some games where they passed on them just because the the games didn't work for what the needs of the arcade are, and the developer just didn't want to change that. And so, unfortunately, unfortunately, just some games can't work in the arcade unless you do some massive retooling. 
and so that's just how it is because the unfortunately for most operators uh, not all operators what they look at first isn't gameplay or graphics or anything like that they look at how well does this earn <laughs> and so if it earns well enough to justify the expense of how much it costs then they'll jump on board for it uh, but otherwise if it it can have all these other bells and whistles and be really cool, but if it doesn't earn well, they're not going to spend the money on it. Um, but still, EXA is very open to working with developers, and uh, a few of those games that I pointed out, you, you, many of you have probably played, and uh, you've seen on their uh, on Steam or on Switch or on some other platform. And so, yes, they are very open to having more content. Um, just something to keep in mind depending on what your game is is that it may need some retooling but i in every instance where i've played these games in both console and arcade uh, i've really appreciated those arcade changes just because again what most people these days in an arcade need is something intuitive very simplified and maybe not as deep in, in some ways but there's still ways to integrate depth into games while fitting what needs what the needs are in an arcade uh, because obviously you can't have a game where you can play for like 45 minutes on one credit you know that that's a game that won't earn and yeah that might not be service to the player that you're used to on console but again there's still ways to reward players and keep them going keep them putting in credits without it being cheap as well and so it's just figuring out that balance but they're also willing to help developers in figuring out how that is as uh, everybody that works for exa they're avid arcade gamers they believe that skill is what's necessary for an arcade game to be good and uh, <laughs> i think they even have some shirts where um because uh, there is a, a phrase in the industry out there at least with major developers where they say skill kills and so they had uh, some kind of uh, t-shirts made up internally just to uh, uh, kind of mock that uh, notion because they believe that skill is needed and that there is a place for it out there still and, and i agree with that because yeah, there's a lot of interest in things like shoot 'em up games in fighting games and beat 'em up games still and other genres that um you know the, the big guys don't necessarily want to ch touch anymore or when they do they simplify them so much that they they don't satisfy the hardcore fans maybe just the the casual fans uh, but still uh, this is a great platform a gateway for so many innovative and cool things to hit the scene um, and, and be revived as well yeah, I mean, I was I was gonna ask you to basically give your your feedback as to whether this is a, a worthy purchase for an arcade or not, but I think you answered that quite a bit. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> um, I guess uh, all that's really left is just give social media shoutouts so people know where to find you and where to check out XR Arcadia if you know any of their links. Sure. Yeah. So uh, I mean, one thing to note is a lot of X's marketing is focused on Japan, uh, but they do stuff for the. Uh, the Western scene, and uh, they do have people here in the States, in California and Florida, uh, to be able to assist operators and uh, but also do some marketing. They just finished up an event at Round One USA. They did a two week kind of a location test where they had 16 of the games there to play across several different cabinets. And so um, I, I think that was a big success, and it's going to lead to lots of great things and uh, one thing i should also mention is um, i'm aware there is a new game announcement hitting at the end of this week um, there's also um, other game announcements that are going to be happening um, over the next few months but they have been pulling back they actually have a lot of games that are ready to launch right now but because of the continued pandemic and especially where that's heard a lot of japanese arcades a lot of places have closed over there there's been a lot of news about that um, they've been holding back and just kind of waiting for things to become a little bit more normal. And so hopefully that does happen, but um, yeah, who, who knows? But anyways, um, so they, they mainly do stuff on Twitter. 
Um, so that's where you'll usually find them. Just note that a lot of their tweets are in Japanese. Of course, you can just use the, uh, the uh, built-in translator in Twitter to, uh, to see those. They're on Instagram as well, just Exa Arcadia. Um, they have a website, it's exa.ac. And I believe they have a Facebook page, but I don't think I've ever seen them really update that one. Uh, they also have a YouTube channel. It's just um, most of their stuff they put unlisted. So they'll put it, they'll embed it on the web pages of the website uh, when you go to the games or you go to order there. Um, it's just, uh, yeah, you, won't, you might not see a lot of stuff pop up on their YouTube channel if you subscribe to that it's just because of that. But uh, yeah, exa.ac is definitely a place where you can go to see profiles of all the games and they've also been adding things like news as far as um, what software updates there are to the games as well as character systems to get into the characters themselves uh, that might be found in the games. And so there's, there's just a lot of good info on there. And uh, also there is a place where it gets into the development, like if you are a developer interested in creating content for it, um, I think that's under the what is XR Acadia section. And so it just talks about all the different engines that they support, which is basically everything. And, um, and talking about if you want to pitch your project to them where you can go to do that. Um, and then of course, the other place to often find news about XR Acadia is arcadeheroes.com. And so I'm posting about it frequently anytime I get a new game announcement. So I'll write a story about that and I'll often include it in things like news bites on the weekend if there's just something that's maybe a little bit more minor that's to be mentioned. Uh, and then of course you can find Arcade Heroes on pretty much every social media outlet out there, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, um, Twitter, and I've even been experimenting with some of the alternates. Uh, ones out there and i just recently opened up a i have a discord channel for arcade heroes uh, so i just discovered a discord alternate called gilded um, which is actually by the developers of roblox but that has a forums feature which is really interesting and so if you have gilded then you can find arcade heroes on there and um, i try and keep these things all updated as to um, what's going on on the site Awesome. Well, I'm going to throw all of those links down in the description. I want to say thanks Thank again, you. Adam, for coming on here um, to talk about X-Arcadia. It, it sounds like such a cool system, and I can't wait to play it. I, there's not one by me, but I'm going to try and find one right. somewhere uh, uh, once I, once I travel a little bit. I think the closest one to you might be in Wisconsin, and so because I know an operator in Wisconsin. I think he's in Madison. Uh, of course, I'm sure that's a bit of a drive. <laughs> we've, got a, uh, we've got a Galactic Battleground cabinet in Madison, and nice. we're looking to go out to Funco to talk to Don. So, I mean. Oh, okay. Yeah, so when you go there, um, it, it's called Castlecade. Okay. Um, and so as far as I know, right now he has Kung Fu versus Karate Champ. He has Lightning Knights, and he's getting Chaos Code. Um, so I'm not sure what else he might add to it soon, but that's your most likely bet to, to find one because uh, I know there's one there. But I, again, I think it's a Madison. It might be in a different city, but it just, Castle Cade is the name of the place where that one's at. I will definitely be looking out for that to go and play. Um, and yeah, I just, again, thank you for coming on. And to Welcome. anybody that's still watching, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We appreciate everyone that checks us out. And until next time, peace. Later.